Go. What, we're on? Oh! Good evening. Welcome to Progressive Soup. My name is David Stevenson. You know, you hold on to these things, and there's always something to do on one of these things. They're, 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 a, little bit, uh, they're a little bit too much fun. But anyway, right, so uh, welcome to Progressive Soup. My name is David Stevenson, and the dogs are with us tonight, apparently. Later on, the cat will be with us, no doubt. Um, but with us, in the interim, we have good friend Rich Frescone, who uh, has a show of his own on Comcast and the internet, and he, is, he distributes it here and there and everywhere. And he started about four years ago now? Well, I started right before Obama's second, uh, uh, you know, second election. Yeah. And, okay. uh, well, I'm going to say, yeah, let's say, let's say six months before that. Okay. But, let it be known, important to note, that before he started his own show, he came on Progressive Soup and did some shows with me. And uh, we had one rousing show with good friend <laughs> Marty Heiser. The three That's of true, us. Yeah, yeah. And we, uh, we actually, I think, as I recall, it was in, in my old condominium, and we stationed the camera up above and looking down. And, and I guess we played that out as being God looking down upon us and, and judging you and me and Marty. And I don't know which of us ended up being judged as the, uh, the most uh, honest. Who knows? Yeah, poor Marty. Well, yeah, and I tell we, Yeah, we, were, we, we can be tough on Marty, but, but we love him because he's, oh, yeah. he's, yeah. he's a decent and honorable guy. Um, even though he's not here, we're not going to... No, we love him because he takes a licking and keeps on ticking. He does, he I does. Say, you know, but the thing is, he's one of the few people stupid enough to stay in the ring yep. when he's losing a fight. Yep. And you gotta love him for it. But enough about Marty Heiser. What about Rich Frascone? Because early on we talked, and then you started your show, and, uh, and I had given, given, your, uh, given your show a slightly different name than what you gave it. You call it Who's Telling the Truth? And since I named you, um, nicknamed you Salty Mouth, because your, your language occasionally gets a bit on the salty side. Yeah. Um, I began calling your show, Who's Telling the <laughs> Truth? Yeah. Um, you can fill in the blank if you'd like. Not so much and anymore. the folks in the audience are getting ready to shout it out, but I'm not, no, 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 none of that, none of that. So, no. um, so take us back to the beginning. What gave you the idea of starting your show, other than being on Progressive Soup? What got, what got you started and how has it played out over these four years? Well, believe it or not, what really got me started was the Fed and how money is manipulated. I remember. Yeah, the Federal and, Reserve. But, but since then, you know, I moved on to global warming. Mm -hmm. Spent a lot of time on that. And then, of course, with global warming, you're dealing with the Republican Party. And then I went on further to just exposing what a bunch of crooks and con men they are, how they deceive the simple folk, and I love calling them simple folk. And, and if anybody ever wants to get in touch with me on Facebook, you know, it's under my name, Rich Frasconi, and when I spell simple folk, it's S-I-M-P-L-E. <laughs> yeah, no, and I, no, okay. You know, you know and, I, and, and what gets, you know, like I said, uh, the science, when I, whenever I, I uh, type the word science, I spell it S-C-Y-E-N-C-E. -E. <laughs> it's an attention getter, but you know, the yeah. thing, uh, what I want to do is I want to prove my point. Yeah, that uh, folks not only spell science wrong occasionally. They get it wrong. Yeah, and, they but get, the, get the whole the, and that, But wrong. that's the, the, beauty, the beauty of the internet and the beauty of the fact that we have NASA and NOAA and the National Academy of Sciences and we have had cut four and the German, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the uh, Japanese Weather Service and all these things confirm. They all confirm one thing. The science is certain. And I try not to use the word settled anymore because if you say certain, it throws a curveball. Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean it's certain? Well, every day it gets more certain. Yeah, and facts, and facts yeah. are, in fact, facts. Well, well that's the thing. And settled, then, I don't know if settled would, be, would really work perfectly, though, because, um, because science is in a constant state of moving, a constant state of learning new things, a constant state of evolving. 
it's always on a track of the facts. Yeah, but what but happens there are small is tweaks here and there along the way. It becomes more certain the more you study it. And that's the beauty of it. See, the one beauty about science, the one thing that's so terrific about it, when something is wrong, mm -hmm. when we can prove something wrong, we throw it out. Like yesterday's newspaper. Yeah. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Doesn't matter what you think, doesn't matter what you believe. Two and two doesn't make five, never will. And once we establish that fact and we get rid of it, but what happens is people, and especially religious people, and I always say religion is the root of all evil. And why? When you get people to believe that their destiny is controlled by some invisible man in the sky, and then you ask these people, you know, where are you getting your morality from? I get it from the Bible. Mm. And I say to people, wait, wait, do me a favor. Yep. Just do me one favor. Sit down and read your Bible. Just sit down and read it, please. Let's see how far you get before you say, Man, this guy got it. He's a real prick, and it's time. <laughs> and but you see, people won't do that. They'll take little quotes, little scripture quotes, and they'll quote them. And some of them sound so prolific. And you people say, "How could anything be wrong with this?" <laughs> Don't take excerpts. Read the whole book. And then you say, "And what used to happen was, and before I became an activist, I was a big Roman Catholic. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus was my man, you know." And then I used to, when, when I was in church, I always used to, when they read the, the Gospels, I always used to say to myself, I'm sure that when I get older, I'll understand this. <laughs> because it made no sense to me back then. Well, now it makes even less sense. I'm going to do a quick rewind here because here's where you and I diverge in thought. Um, you mentioned you, you say that you feel like religion has caused a lot of problems. Oh, without a doubt. Okay. Without yes. a doubt. Yes, but there are a lot of different religious groups, and a lot of them are a lot more open-minded than other ones. Now, as an example, our good and dear friend Marty Heiser, mm -hmm. his, his folks take the Bible as a literal interpretation other religious groups, ones that I'm closer to, have um, a, different, a different point of view on that. They think of the Bible, the stories in the Bible as being parables rather than cold, hard facts. They, they give us a, a blueprint and some guidance on how to live our lives, but they don't, but we don't take it literally. In fact, in fact, think about the fact that the Bible has been rewritten many times. It's been <laughs> there re you go. Rewritten and reinterpreted. So, Dave, so, how, so, how, so, which, so, which, so which version is the one to be taken literally? And I think the answer to that is none of them. One of my, one of my fav favorite mentors mm -hmm. is Lawrence Krauss. Lawrence Krauss, yeah. Theoretical physicist. I mean, uh, just, just brilliant, brilliant. You know, uh, studied under Richard Feynman. Mm -hmm. uh, had coffee with Noam Chomsky all the time yeah, when he was Noam at Chomsky had, that guy. When, that guy, good good friend Henry uh, Henry Pietras's attention because we love to talk about Noam Chomsky in our Saturday morning uh, discussion. Okay, but because you know because Chomsky, Chomsky's a, a, a bright man that that can dissect language and help us understand hmm. how best to. Um, to explain our, our point of view, no matter but, what your point of view is. But like Lawrence Krauss would say, you know, he'd say, you know, the Bible was written by Bronze Age peasants who didn't know where the sun went at night. And you're going to take your morality and your information from these clowns? And to make matters worse, you know, most of the stuff, like the Gospels written about Jesus, mm -hmm. They weren't written until the Council of Nicaea in 300, when Charlemagne said, wait, wait a minute, I saw this picture of a, of a cross. So from now on, I want all our boys, we're all going to be Christians. Mm -hmm. So they cobbled together all these, and, <laughs> and then don't forget, back then, you know, they, they had the, uh, the, the guys, the scribes, that was, 
<laughs> they couldn't read. All they could do was copy. Mm -hmm. So yes. and one slip yeah. of the pen, and yeah, well, no, yeah. But see, the thing is, you know, the way everything's been put together, and what what bothers me is, you know, if you're going to tell me something. You know, the only way I'll accept what you tell me is if you prove to me with facts and evidence. And one of the biggest problems with religion is it's an invisible product. You know, sometimes my wife, my son will leave the TV on in the living room and I'll go up and I'll get make coffee in the morning and they have a religious channel. It goes over to a religion. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you, it sounds so nice and so pleasant and what God's going to do for you and he's going to carry you and he's going to give you this and he's going to take care of that. And I'm saying, wait, wait, is this the same God that's allowing the globe to warm? Is this the same God that's causing this increased web? Is this the same God that gives cancer to kids? You know, you're praying to this guy? The guy that causes the problem? Oh, it's, you know, God, God gave you free will. You know, you're a... Stop. Stop with the nonsense. Let's talk about reality. Let's talk about reality. Let's talk about what we can, we can prove. And stop with the nonsense. And then, you know, you, you look at these, the churches and the so-called religions. And what do they do? They all get away tax-free. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> Why? Because we have this idea. And because we've been brainwashed. And let's be honest with each other. We were all brainwashed. All right, you, 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 bring, you bring forth the, the idea, and then, then, we'll, then we'll, between the two of us, judge whether how the level of honesty. Go ahead. Yeah, but the level of honesty is between me and you. Mm -hmm. We know what reality is. We can see things. We understand things. We can look things up. We know that we're stardust. You know, you tell people you're stardust and they flip out. Yeah, and you know, the, the atoms in your left hand probably came from a different star than the atoms in your right hand. And you know, you try to explain this to people, and, you know. Hey. Yes, that whole notion is actually very religious and very mystical and very... Um, well, don't that's, say that's religious. Great, Just, well, you know. well, yeah, it is in, in the mm. sense that it's, it's in the sense that it has a a, a high a high degree of, of comfort and mysticism, and it gives yeah. you a, it gives you a good warm and fuzzy to think about the fact that that your the atoms in your body came from somewhere probably very far away. Yeah, but making you feel warm and fuzzy does not prove that it's religious. See, that's. You know, when I listen to some music from the Beatles, I go, wow, I'm inspired. You know what I mean? When I look through a telescope, when I look at the Hubble, when I look at some pictures from Hubble, I go, wow. When I understand that only a hundred years ago, we thought that we were the only galaxy. Mm -hmm. now, now we understand that there's a, probably over a hundred billion galaxies, each with a hundred billion stars, and probably more important if we can able, if we can figure out the gravitational waves <laughs> from the two black holes that just collided. <laughs> And we can see how the dark energy and all this, and I sit there and I watch this stuff on YouTube and I listen to debates. And I'll listen to a debate from Oxford University and I'll say to myself, I'm privileged enough to be able to sit here and for free gain the knowledge that these guys have spent years developing and then what I do is, and what I say most importantly on our show, is I cite my sources. Mm -hmm. When I get my inf information, I always say to people, where are you getting your information from? Be specific and cite your source. And it's really, so my best friend's uncle's father works, knows the guy that works for NASA and he's, <laughs> No, I'm sorry, it doesn't work. It's a little... It's but see, what'll happen is... That's, that's good 12th hand information. Well, no, but like with global warming, you know, 97% mm -hmm. of the, and this is important, 97% of the climate scientists mm -hmm. publishing, publishing peer-reviewed studies agree that the world is warming. Now that 97%, that's a landslide. Yep. But you know what? 
that still leaves 3%. Mm -hmm. So what will happen? Fox News will just happen to find somebody in that 3%. Yeah. And just to create a little bit of doubt. Who may, oh. who may in fact not even be anybody, that not even actually be a climate scientist. He might be a weatherman. Could and be. I don't mean weatherman as in uh, the weather underground back in the 60s. I mean a weatherman as in somebody that, that stands in front of a, a, a green screen and a chart and reads off temperatures, and that's about all they know about uh, about the how the world and the universe operate. Well, they don't. But see, the thing is, what happens is, if they really, if you, if they really become critical thinkers, and if they have to cite their source, once they start to look this stuff up, mm. they go, "Oh, wait a minute! You mean this? This was this?" I was wrong? They're with the rest of us then. Then they're questioning themselves. And when you question yourself, when you question your own beliefs and your own thoughts, that's when, that's when you learn. Well, like Lawrence Krauss that's says, when you learn. the easiest person to fool is yourself. Mm. And we all fall into the traps. And it happens, I won't say it happens all the time, but beyond, you know, it I'm does. sure you've fallen for things. But you know, we tend to convince ourselves, you know? And let's face it, like, you know, you have Richard Dawkins and, you know, Lawrence Krauss still saying, look, our brains derived from evolving off the plains of Africa mm -hmm. and how to keep ourselves alive, not how to develop quantum mechanics. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, when you hear a rustling in the bushes, is that something that wants to make you lunch, or is that just the wind? And you're not concerned about whether the uh, the, the, jag, the jaguar takes this arc, <laughs> this arc when he comes at you, or whether he takes this arc when he comes at you. But you know what? I always blame. I, I always blame it on Lucy, and you know, you know who Lucy is, right? Hey, Lou, that one. <laughs> hey, Lou. Oh, Lucy, the uh, Lucy's the uh, skeleton that they found yeah. in Africa about, about a four, three, about three million years. Well, about, old. Yeah, around well, close enough, you know, yeah. around four. And Lucy is the first species to really come down from the trees, mm -hmm. and she found out that coming down from the trees and standing up and looking around. You are kitty cat says someone is. Wait, 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 wait. Hello. Basil. Yeah, yeah, we, I know we always do the, um, I know Basil, we always do, uh, we put in a good word for your show um, right about this time in, in each episode of Progressive Soup, but, you know, you're, a lot of times you're saying the same stuff, you know, well, we got to come up with, he's saying, by the way, he likes the fact that I'm reminding you that you got your start on Progressive Soup, that, that I gave you the, the push, but he wants to remind me that he's the one Basil's the one that got me started. He got me this gig. No, wait a second now. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. Progressive Soup's been on the air for nine years, and Basil Budicat presents, exclamation point, has only been on the air about, uh, hold on, about five and a half years. So how is it that you, who have been on the air five and a half years, gave me, who's been on the air with Progressive Soup nine years, who gave me my start you quantum said, quantum physics that, I, I, do you, is he, are you talking to him at the same time is he got is he got a, like an earpiece in because basil said because <laughs> when you say because when you said quantum physics basil was here on the phone saying <laughs> oh that's quantum why quantum physics that's why he called i got quantum it. physics so that's it okay well okay um i'll see you uh yeah, tell you him we're talking about lucy <laughs> he says don't he says don't disparage his mother's your mother's name is Lucy? He says don't disparage his mother. Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll talk to you I'll talk to you later and, and onward with your show. And by the way, people will have who have seen your shows the last couple of weeks know that you've moved and you've got a new studio that's been set up in the uh, you're gonna call it the Blue Buffalo room because you because he's got Kristen uh, signed up to turn our oil tank into a, to do a little artwork with it and turn it into a blue buffalo. That's gonna be his backdrop for his, uh, for his seat facing the camera in his new studio. You have an oil tank? Yeah, we have oil heat. 
What? Yeah. Yeah, it's a real oil tank. It's 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 really got it's got oil in it too, as a matter of fact. What about solar? Enough. No, we've got we've got more trees. We've got more trees than than the Garden of Eden, I believe. So there's there's going to be no solar there until we take down uh, some hundred foot tall. Don't trees. get me going with the Garden of Eden. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, catch you next time. Thanks. Yeah, okay. So let's get back to Lucy. Right, back to Lucy. And it's not hey Lucy. Okay. So initially, yeah. initially we were quadrupeds. Yeah, yeah, we were. On we worked on, we worked on all four. And for those of you in the audience that have uh, that are male enough to have five legs, um, <laughs> um, quadrupeds, of course, being four legs. Four so legs. Lucy's the reason why. Yeah. I have a fake hip. Yeah. A lot of people have knee problems. You know, we get too much weight going on two limbs when it should be on four. So when you have problems, yeah. blame it on Lucy. Huh. And you heard that here, you know? And the, and the beauty of it is you can look this stuff up. Yeah. You know what's even better? And, I, and you can bet I will because I'm like you. I'm a questioning person. And I don't care who tells me something, even if it's... Even if it's a guy that has a TV show called Who's Telling Them? <laughs> there you go. I'm, well, still I gonna I'm still going to check it. The beauty point. is, you know, asking Siri, Yeah. you know, for, for, but, but I tell you, even when I Google stuff now, yeah. I hit the microphone button on the Google, yeah. and I just ask the question, and I tell you, it's beautiful. And a lot of times, like, uh, I wanted to get the number for Lowe's Theaters. I wanted to find out what time an Inconvenient yeah. Truth Part 2 was playing. Yeah. So I said, Siri, can you give me the, the number for Lowe's Theaters in, in uh, Danbury? And she comes on and she goes, uh, that, the number for Lowe's, you know, blah, 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 blah. She spits it out. And I said, automatically, thank you. <laughs> and does Siri respond? <laughs> you know what? I heard somebody one day. And she was not a happy camper. She was trying to get some some songs on, and she was really getting angry. Yeah. And Siri came on, and she goes, there's no reason to behave like that. And I'm saying, if I didn't know any better, I would think that this is a real person. But I guess they can tell. Didn't the same thing happen to you, Henry, where Siri got kind of... Or was it to one of the people in our group that Siri kind of got... Um, Did it happen to you also? Get she caught. gets confused on, on context, usually. Okay, but it wasn't... Alexa, some, too. Okay, wasn't it one of us that, that Siri or Alexa, one of the two of them, had yeah, but this person a bit of anger in, in our, our <laughs> response to them and, and shut us down for half an hour or Alexa something? Gave us, that, yeah. gave us a time out? Yeah. Yeah, Alexa would do that. I got timed out on uh, Facebook twice. Yeah. Timed out on, what did you do? Well, one day I got for uh, 24 hours, and then the next time was for a month. And, what and I got, I got, I got. How did you I, get accomplish that? Uh, I called them one of the simple folk uh, who was brainwashed. Yeah. And uh, I called them stupid. They didn't like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But no, wait, I, the time I got canned for a month is because I said to somebody, uh, you need to be bitch slapped. Okay, and it, that's how, there you go. See, I remember. Well, See, that's but, what, this is where the, the term Mr. Salty Mouth came from. Yeah, but I didn't, re I, to me. Wait, 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 hold on. It wasn't bitch slapped. It was bada bing backhand bitch slapped, <laughs> as I recall, was the term that you like to use again. Yeah, but I, yeah, I didn't think that was that, you know, I mean, it's not like I was threatening them, but I guess I said that to Kurt, and Kurt goes, no, Richard, goes, I, I take offense at that, and I go, wow. Yeah, isn't that I fun? Too. Yeah, yeah, Isn't that weird? Yeah. Well, I, I, I've never said it again. Yeah. And then, uh, but I did Until get now. knocked off again for 24 hours for calling somebody stupid. And when you're stupid, guess, you know, when you act ridiculous, yeah. I'm going to ridicule you. Yeah, but see, here's the difference, and, and this is this the, probably parallels to our discussion about religion. Whereas in religion, it's not religion that's wrong, but there are segments of religions that have very wrong ideas, very wrong notions that they put forward um, that are that are very problematic. And in fact, the uh, the folks over the weekend in Charlotte. You know the Ku Klux Klan and the, and the Nazis. I mean, they're they 
they basically claim to be Christians. They, they believe in white Christian doctrine, as they call it that. But back to the, uh, the notion that, um, and I lost my train of thought here for a second, but... Um, well, with the religion, yeah, getting the, back to religion. Yeah, it, but but go, not paralleling religion to what we were talking about before. Um, yeah, but you see, what, what, that, what bothers me yeah. is when you get somebody and you sell them an invisible product mm -hmm. that can't be wrong, right? and you virtually brainwash these people, yeah. and let's be honest, where do people get their religion from? Where do most people get their okay, religion from? That's, okay, that's the parallel I was drawing. Never tell a person they're stupid because that shuts down the conversation. Right. You can tell them that what they said, what the, the statement that they make, well, you can is, tell is, them that is, their is, ideas is, are is, stupid. Is, 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 in your opinion, a stupid idea. They, so you're not criticizing them individually. Yeah. It's not well, a personal you don't wanna, thing. Yeah, it's, it's a criticism of a behavior rather than an individual. Right. So the conversation can continue. But, you know, when you, when you convince people to believe in things that don't exist. Mm -hmm. Or are unprovable. You know, right. Well, you know, the thing, if you're going to tell me mm -hmm. that there's something that's supernatural, then you're going to have to give me supernatural evidence. It's mm -hmm. that simple. If you're going to make a claim, yep. then you're going to have to prove that claim. And the, high, the higher the claim, the higher the level of evidence of necessary. Of course. Yeah. And, but the thing is, what they say is, I don't need evidence. I have We're going to come back. We're going to come back and do a second show tomorrow uh, at uh, noon 30, Thursday, tomorrow, noon 30. So we'll start with faith. How's we're gonna, that? We're going to come back, and we're going to start with faith first. But I'm not going to shut the show down quite yet. Now I can shut the show down because... Good friend, uh, Henry Pietras, faith, right? <laughs> has given us the 30 seconds, and I trust him. I trust that the fact that he's, that 30 seconds actually, I mean, 30 seconds actually means 30 seconds. All right, so I'll see you tomorrow. So we'll be back here tomorrow. On faith. On faith. Okay. Absolutely. It's been Progressive Soup. I'm David Stevenson. Rich Frascone, nice. or, as, or as other people call him, Rich Frasconi. Nice Italian. But we, call, but we call him Frascone, and enjoy your evening. We'll see you tomorrow.